Oh, State Secretary, dear Claudia Roth, dear colleagues, dear Mr. Rogulski, dear Mr. Weber, Excellencies, ministers, uh, parliamentarians, friends of the Humboldt Forum, dear guests. Well, it's not easy, at least not for me these days, and I'm sure that this applies to many of you, to open a colloquium like this. September the 9th, 2001, 24th of February 2022, 7th of October 2023. The most recent history is full of these catastrophic dates and events after which nothing was the same as before. So what's the point of history if we never learn? So this is uh, the question that we raise in view of um, these kind of historic seizures. So this is why I find it particularly important to ask time and again, what can we do? And I think the subtitle of your uh, colloquium has three important uh, points which is dialogue, remembrance, and solidarity. And I'm quite glad that we as the Humboldt Forum can be the host for this colloquium because these are also three key elements of our programmatic work. Europe uh, is mentioned on your invitation. For us at the Humboldt Forum, this is a very important part after solidarity, remembrance, dialogue. Um, this is a very important part of it. So on the one hand, this has something to do with the ethnological collections in this building. Uh, when we discuss the impact of colonialism, imperialism, and appropriation of the world, but this does not mean that we are only confined to these areas and areas of the world that are called the Global South, but we particularly also look to Central and Eastern Europe. And we've just talked about that the center of Europe is actually in Poland. So there it already starts. So what kind of Europe? Where's the center? Where's the east? Where's the south? Um, these are exactly the questions that we discuss here time and again. A week ago, there was quite an interesting weekend taking place where we talked about post-socialist people's palaces. And some of you might still know it and remember it. The Palace of the Republic was on this location. Um, however, it is no longer there. Yeah, it's part of our collective memories. And of course, we do not only have buildings in our collective memories, but also other aspects. Um, some might say, um, unfortunately, it's still in our memories. Others say, luckily. However, the things that have disappeared are not forgotten. They are quite present in the memory of the individual, of whole groups, or also in the national narratives. So we've seen what has happened in Belgrade, in Bucharest, Sofia, or Prague, or also in Warsaw, or in Kiev, where these people's palaces that have and had an explicit role in socialism and where they still exist, even though um, there were uh, more of them than in the GDR, where I grew up. So it's very important to look into history and the history of monarchies, dictatorships, but also the history of counter movements. It's the location of 1848. So a few days ago, Christopher Clark published his new book and he gave a large European overview over the movement of 1848 and he touched upon many topics that you focus on in these days. So many of these topics also go far beyond 1848 or 1830. They go farther back and they still have an impact on our lives today, not only in the field of cultural and science. 
and it is a place that looks towards the world. Today we are the first meeting of our global community center after the opening of the Humboldt Forum a year ago. So there are many dozens of people from all over the world coming here, representatives of NGOs, artists, museum colleagues who want to discuss with us how this Humboldt Forum can be shaped, because we consider ourselves exactly such a place, a place that allows international voices, transdisciplinary um, approaches for a very diverse um, society. And so far, I'm quite happy that we can be the host of this conference, I wish you successful and fruitful, good, um, lasting discussions in the field of common remembering, solidarity and understanding and in the common struggle against all forms of terrorism, racism, anti-Semitism and any form of discrimination of human beings worldwide. So we are happy that you're here and I wish you a successful conference. Well, the next speaker will be Rafa Rogulski, a representative of the ENRS in Warsaw. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Dzień dobry. Welcome. Welcome. I'm sorry, I, I will not all languages, all possible languages which are represented here uh, try to, to use. I will speak German. Sehr geehrte Frau Ministerin. Madam Minister, Professor Dogerlo, Matthias Weber, uh, dear Professor Weber, Professor Schraps, and dear representatives of the governments of the ENRS member states, representatives of the diplomatic corps, dear representatives of cultural institutions, science and educational institutions from many European countries, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Every human being which is capable of thinking knows that sometimes it's worth it to um, listen to uh, the other, not only those of whom we already know that they think the way we think, but also those who raise difficult questions and those who are not satisfied with just any answer. That's why we chose the title. What's the point of history if we never learn? The title is from a text, from the lyrics of a song that young participation, participants of the ENRS um, meeting chose, which took place in Mauthausen Gusen in Austria last year. It was the reaction of these young people on the dramatic uh, history of the extermination in the Mauthausen and Gusen camps, which they learned at the same time when the Russian war of aggression against Ukraine restarted, a new war which not only became possible because of the uh, poli political approach of the Western countries towards Russia. So this connection to the present day was very impressive to the young people, also their helplessness in view of such a situation. This made the participants of Sound of Silence to ask the question, What's the point of history if we never learn from our own mistakes? So this is why we now will have a first, um, during the first panel discussion, we will show you a film on the project of the European network and in order to show you and give you an impression of the atmosphere of such an international encounter 
and how they look into history. The ENRS is an institution which is focused on international dialogue on history. All activities from the idea to a project to its a project implementation are places of an open, sometimes difficult, but usually very constructive discussions. And this work mode is a natural evolving process. The network that was built against the background of a remembrance conflict, a debate that we in Central Europe uh, had when we saw the turn of the 20s to the 21st century. At the time, the idea came up to commemorate the suffering of the Germans who were resettled from the eastern uh, parts of the German Reich, and um, of course this would have been acceptable if the planned commemoration would not have, and with regard to the context of the Second World War and the obvious connection to this war and the starting of this war, um, if this would not have neglected these aspects. So the discussions that were held partially very emotionally and took place for many years up until there was the eventual idea to set up an international organization on a dialogue um, on history in the 20th century, which is the ENRS. So in the years 2005 to 2009, uh, statements were signed to cooperate. In 2010, the network secretariat was set up in Warsaw, and up until today, we have conducted more than 500 projects in most European countries, as well as the US and Japan. And in these almost 14 years, more than 100 employees, interns, as well as trainees from more than a dozen European countries worked for the Secretariat of the Network consisting of the ENRS Institute and the Foundation. So today, the team of the network secretariat consists of 31 uh, employees. We are being supported by international bodies. The steering committee, which is providing guidance for our direction, and two advisory committees in which Germany, Poland, Slovenia, uh, Hungary, and Poland, as well as the observer countries, Austria, the Czech Republic, Georgia, Albania, Estonia, and Lithuania are represented. And in these bodies, we conduct an open, unhampered discussion on topics which are important for the further development of the network. The funding of the ENRS is supported by the different member states. Here in Berlin, in your presence, uh, Ms. State Secretary, it is necessary to mention that this year Germany has increased its support, doubled its support for the ENRS, which is almost in line with the Polish contribution, and we are very grateful for that. So we consider this a sign of trust and hope that this state will continue next year and over the upcoming years. And also the support that we get from the European Union is increasing over years. The EU funding right now make up 90% of our budget. These are important figures because only thanks to you we are able to um, conduct our work. But the decisive aspect also is how we work. First of all, all our projects are international projects and they look into subjects that have at least a connection with two or more countries. Secondly, we invite partner institutions from different countries, some of them even outside of Europe, in order to prepare our joint projects. This way, we were able to build a network of more than 500 partner organizations from more than 30 countries. And this figure is growing 
year by year. Thirdly, we are trying to bring together participants that have different viewpoints. This is decisive if you really want to come to an agreement or um, if you want to bring different viewpoints closer together. When it comes to the international implementation of a project, be it a bilateral or international one, it is not sufficient to have like-minded people participating uh, from different countries. It is necessary to have different viewpoints represented there. Only then we have the opportunity to create something new and something fresh, something that is not simply the sum of one or two different viewpoints. Fourthly, the European Network on Remembrance and Solidarity also brings together different interest groups, and all these uh, different groups are represented here, politicians, EU officials from different levels. So thanks to your work and decisions, we got the legal and financial um, basis for our actions. Um, there are employees from public and private organizations who participate in our projects and also help in the implementation, for example, museums, education institutions, teachers. And the third realm is science, scientists, uh, re history researchers, um, remembrance researchers, journalists, and these groups are dependent on each other and they cooperate with each other. With their, without their participation, um, much of our work would not be possible. So today's forum was organized, amongst other reasons, so that representatives of these three spheres, these three groups, can come together and have an exchange. And as we have come together in such a group today, I would like to thank all of you for taking the time to be here for your support for our institutional existence and our project. So thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, today and tomorrow we will discuss what's the point of history and what it really means and how we can support the European nations in different ways to learn about their histories, to learn more and better understand their identities and themselves and also each other. These are important topics and their importance is um, increasing when you look at these topics through the prisma of what is happening in Eastern Europe or the Middle East at the moment, and I'm sure that we will discuss that as well. So maybe we manage in the course of our discussion to at least improve the world a little bit. So maybe new ideas can evolve for cooperation, and I would kindly invite you to do that. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Professor Dr. Matthias Weber, the director of the Federal Institute for Culture and History of the Germans in Eastern Europe. State Secretary, Excellencies, dear Mr. Drogano, Mr. Schwabs, Mr. Meckel, ladies, gentlemen. Also on behalf of the Federal Institute for Culture and History of the Germans in Eastern Europe, I would like to very warmly welcome you to this international forum at the Humboldt Forum Berlin. That fits very nicely. I'm very happy that today we hear speakers and many multipliers from different horizons with different backgrounds and interests coming together from about 20 different countries to have an exchange. So be most welcome here at this forum. And I hope that this uh, diversity will become 
tangible during our panel discussions, but also during the breaks and the different informal talks so that we can learn and uh, hear more from our different backgrounds. And this is exactly the important point, because I would like to quote from our program text, the competing views on the past do impact more and more the perspectives regarding present time and the future, and thus the current political activities and acting in Europe. Remembrance is in the title. It is uh, framed by the two other terms, dialogue and uh, solidarity, and these are the key terms. Remembrance does not only refer to technical memorizing of uh, past facts, but also to look in a self-critical way at the past by going into dialogue. Internationally, this can only work if solidarity is seen and accepted as the basic principle by all, as a basic state of mind, not of confrontation, but of co-responsibility and co-engagement when it comes to shaping the present time and the future. And I would like to take that as a given precondition for our forum and our dialogue here. Different historic uh, experience should be looked at including the experience of others in order to really go beyond your own horizon. It is about creating multi-perspective and multifaceted knowledge about history in different contexts. Such a way of shaping remembrance is not looking backwards, but is based on the requirements of present time and forms a dynamic process of interaction. The cultural historian, Mrs. Asman, most of you will know her, has uh, this summarized in the following phrase, remembrance means to work for the future. And this is how we understand our encounter today. We want to look at new requirements for public history and historic education and discuss them together. And to look at history once more and to see how it can be used as a danger, as a weapon again is shown by the Russian President Putin, not only by looking at um, propaganda, but uh, falsifying history and trying to divide Europe. And therefore, solidarity is important when we look at the European discourse, because only when we stand together and show solidarity, we can resist to such an abuse regarding history and the past. We want to give a voice also to those that come from different cultures, especially cultures with the experience of colonialism and have come to Europe and have suffered and been impacted by exclusion, marginalization, war and suffering. All of these very challenging and demanding tasks, but they have also a large positive potential. It would be outstanding if our forum that starts today might tap into that um, potential and use it in order to strengthen, choose tolerance, freedom, democracy, and uh, liberty, and strengthen solidarity and the standing together in Europe. That would be my deepest wish and request for this forum. A thanks to all institutions that have been listed on the program with the logos. These are our partners that helped us in the run-up to this conference, that advised us and gave us support. I would like to thank the ambassador of Romania, Excellence uh, Mrs. Ranescu, that invites us to the reception at her embassy tonight. This is a special highlight for us during our forum. I would like to thank the cultural ministers for funding the European Network Remembrance and Solidarity that enables us to do this work, as Mr. Ogilski has already stressed, and I subscribe to what he has just said. And in order to conclude, I would like to mention the very committed teams that have prepared this forum meeting. It's the team of the European Network Remembered and Solidarity, the team of the Federal Institute at Oldenburg, and all of the colleagues have helped us in a fantastic way to prepare this event. A great thanks to all of them. And I would just like to mention one name on behalf of all others, and that's Helena Link. You met her already for the past six months. She has uh, been uh, organizing all of it and had all the 
uh, different contacts uh, and coordinated all the activities and great felt thanks to you, Mrs. Link. But the most important is the Minister of State uh, of Culture and Media, Ms. Roth. Uh, thank you very much for being here. It's outstanding to have you here. We feel honored and we feel perfectly supported by you. Ladies, gentlemen, thank you for your time. And I would now pass the floor to State Minister Claudia Roth.